Hey guys, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you as always for being here. I still sound a little sick and weird, but maybe, maybe it's better. Maybe you like this better. <laughs> um, okay, so last week we had President's Day week, which I actually thoroughly enjoyed. We watched All the President's Men, Dave, and 13 Days. And not only did I learn so much and it like spurred my interest in looking up more, but I loved all three of those movies, like on the edge of my seat with the two dramas and Dave was just so feel good and made me want him for our president. I got a lot of requests after like, if you are having a president's week, it is not complete without watching Lincoln. So here I am and I'm actually really excited for this. Remember, I am Canadian. I'm American too, but I grew up in Canada. So uh, we did learn a, a little bit about American history, but probably not as much as you. And then I went to college in, uh, America and so I did take an American history class anyways of course I know the name Abraham Lincoln I know that he was the one who abolished slavery that's like the big thing I know about him it's like one of those names that is a president you don't forget like George Washington Abraham Lincoln I am really excited to learn more about his life and his presidency I know he's played by Daniel Day Lewis and I know Daniel Day Lewis is like one of the I, I know he's called like one of the greatest actors. I've watched Last of the Mohicans, you can check that reaction out. I watched Phantom Thread, which is a Patreon exclusive, and I watched Gangs of New York, um, also on the channel, which you can check that reaction out. And he was pretty incredible in that one, I would say. So I've heard he does an amazing job in this movie. I'm pretty sure it won awards. I'm really excited to watch. It's a long one, buckle in. So President's Day extended. Here we go with Lincoln. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Here's the bell if you want to be notified when we release new videos. And Patreon is here if you want to vote on polls. Right now we have a huge Star Trek poll going on, 26 options. We're narrowing it down to what I watch of the next generation. So if you have strong opinions on that, like many do, you can go on and vote there. Okay, let's watch Lincoln. Oh wow. Holy crap. I don't think I was expecting this in this movie. Some of us was in the second Kansas colored. We fought the Rebs at Jenkins Ferry last April. Oh we decided we weren't taking no Reb prisoners, and we didn't leave one of them alive. What's your name, soldier? Private Harold Green, sir. How long have you been a soldier? Two years, sir. They killed a thousand rebel soldiers, sir. They were very brave. And making three dollars less each month than white soldiers. Well, Equal pay strange. now, but still no commissioned Negro officers. Maybe in a few years, they can abide the idea of Negro lieutenants and captains. In 50 years, maybe a Negro colonel. In 100 years, the vote. What would you do after the war? Work, sir. Perhaps you'll hire me. Perhaps I will. We were at, uh, was at Gettysburg. Uh, you boys fight at Gettysburg? Oh, we didn't fight there. We just signed up last month. Yeah, we heard you speak. We had oh, damn, damn. Uh, hey, how tall are you anyway? Oh, geez, shut up. Could you hear what I said? It was uh, it four was... score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth from this continent a new nation. Even liberty to be dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That's good. Thank you. Oh. Boys, best go and find your company. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so these are the northern troops, but they still had like colored infantries and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people. January 1865. Two months have passed since Abraham Lincoln's re-election. The American Civil War is now in its fourth year. Why did I not realize it was that long? Ships moved by some terrible power. Yes, I have an intuition that we're headed towards a shore. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. Well, not that I have bad dreams. Speed that's strange to me. I'm used to going a deliberate pace. Oh, I love her. Brilliant. Sally Fields. Perhaps it's, it's the assault on Wilmington Port. You dream about the ship before battle, usually. Almost two years, nothing mends. Her head? Another casualty of the war. He wants to listen to a useless woman grouse about her carriage accident. I do. Most probably an accident. It was an assassin whose intended target was you. How are the uh, plans coming along for the big shindy? It's not Wilmington Port. 
It's not a military campaign. It's the amendment to abolish slavery. Why else would you force me to invite demented radicals into my home? You're going to try to get the amendment passed in the House of Representatives before the inauguration? Don't spend too much money on the flub-dubs. No one's loved as much as you. Don't waste that power on an amendment bill that's sure of defeat. Do you remember Roberts coming home for the reception? I knew you'd forget. That's the ship you're sailing on. The 13th Amendment. The war started in his first year of his presidency, and he got reelected, even though they had been at war for... Oh, too young boy. Sleeping kids are such angels. The part assigned to me is to raise the flag. If there be no fault in the machinery, I will do. And when up, it'll be for the people to keep it up. That's my speech. <laughs> from Mississippi flying straight and from New England shore. We'd still be 20 votes short. Only 20? 20 House Democrats who will vote to abolish slavery, in my opinion. To which I always listen. Or pretend to. With all three of my ears. He's witty. Why tarnish your invaluable luster with a battle in the house? It's a rat's nest. The same gang of talentless hicks and hacks who rejected the amendment ten months ago will lose. I like our chances now. We consider the obstacles that we'd face. We have a Republican majority, but barely more than 50%. We need Democratic support. Mr. President, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Jolly, who've come from Missouri. From to your city, President. Mr. Jolly? Ma'am? He is so tall. There's only one toll booth in Jeff City to the southwest. But President Monroe give that toll gate to my grandpa. And Quincy Adams give my papa a letter saying it's on. Just tell me what you want from me. <clears throat> Do you know about the proposed 13th Amendment to the yes, Constitution? Sir, everybody knows of it. President favors it. Do you? We do. What I favor is ending the war, since slavery is what they're fighting for. If the war finished first... President would... Lincoln says the war won't stop unless we finish but slavery. If the rebels surrendered next week, would you? Want Congressman Burton to vote for the 13th Amendment. If that was how it was, no more war and all. I reckon Mr. Jolly much prefer not to have Congress pass the amendment. Why is that? If you don't have to let the people, I begin to see why you're in such a great hurry to put it through. It seems crazy now, doesn't it? To look back and like, that keeping black people enslaved was worth fighting a whole war for. You can't afford a single defection from anyone in the party. You know who you've got to see. Ask Preston Blair, can I call on him around five o'clock? Preston Blair. All Republicans ought to be conservative. I founded this party in my own am home to be a conservative anti-slavery party, not a hobby horse. You need our help. Yes, sir, I do. How's your brother, Bob? He's at school now, but he's coming to visit in four days. Your daddy knows that what I want in return for all the help I can give him is to go down to Richmond like he said I could as soon as Savannah fell and talk to Jefferson Davis to start negotiating for peace. Vote for this rash and dangerous amendment only if every other possibility is exhausted. Uh, we can't tell our people they can vote yes on abolishing slavery unless at the same time we can tell them that you're seeking a negotiated peace. Okay, that makes sense, actually. Thunder forth, God of War. We'll commence our assault on Wilmington from the sea. Oh, I know all these guys. Why is this burnt? Was the boy playing with it? He got took by a breeze several nights back. This is an official War Department map. 58 ships are underway. We'll keep up a steady barrage. Our first target is Fort Fisher. 100 shells a minute. Till they surrender. Wilmington falls, Richmond falls after. The war is done. Here, here, here. And why instead are we reading in the Herald that the anti slavery amendment is being precipitated onto the House floor for debate? Because your eagerness in what seems an unwarranted intrusion of the executive into legislative prerogatives is compelling it towards to what's likely to be its premature demise. Signed the Emancipation Proclamation. I remember that. Edward Bates being any too certain about the legality of my proclamation, just it wasn't downright criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Back when I rode the legal circuit in Illinois, defended a woman from Metamora named Lissa Goings. They said she murdered her husband. He was 83. He was choking her and uh, grabbed a hold of a stick of firewood and fractured his skull and he died. In his will, he wrote, I expect she has killed me. 
If I get over it, I will have revenge. <laughs> I asked the prosecuting attorney if I might have a short conference with my client. Went into a room in the courthouse, but I alone emerged. The window in the room was found to be wide open. It was believed the old lady may have climbed out of it. Before I left her in the room, she asked me where she'd get a good drink of water, and I told her, Tennessee. <laughs> Mrs. Goings was seen no more in Metamora. Enough justice had been done. They even forgave the bondsman her bail. I'm afraid I don't see. I decided that the Constitution gives me war powers. But no one knows just exactly what those powers are. I don't know. I decided I needed them to exist to uphold my oath to protect the Constitution. That might recommend to suspicion that I agree with the Rebs that they're slaves of property in the first place. Of course, I don't. Glad to see any man free. And if calling a man property or war contraband does the trick, why I caught at the opportunity. So, if in fact the Negroes are property according to law, have I the right to take the rebels' property from them if I insist they're rebels only and not citizens of a belligerent country? And slipperier still, I maintain it ain't our actual southern states in rebellion, but only the rebels living in those states. The laws of which states remain in force. Oh. How then can I legally free them with my proclamation as I done? And as I'm canceling. That is slippery. Laws, I felt the war demanded it. My oath demanded it. Two years ago, I proclaimed these people emancipated. Well, let's say the courts decide I had no authority to do it. They might well decide that. Say there's no amendment abolishing slavery. Say it's after the war, and I can no longer use my war powers to just ignore the court's decisions. Might those people I freed be ordered back into slavery? Because he doesn't have the war powers anymore. That's why he has to do it before the war ends. Come February the 1st, I intend to sign the 13th Amendment. <laughs> Get on board. Tell Mr. Stevens we expect him to put his back into it. It's not going to be easy, but we it's trust It's impossible. Oh. We can't organize anything immediately in the House. I have been canvassing the Democrats since the election. They have stiffened, if anything, Mr. Secretary. There aren't nearly enough votes. We're whalers, Mr. Ashley. We've been chasing this whale for a long time. Finally placed a harpoon in the monster's back. It's in, James. We finished the deed now. We can't wait. One flop of his tail, he'll smash the boat and send us all to eternity. I love his, um, analogies. We can't offer up abolition's best legal prayer to his games and tricks. He said he'd welcome the South back with all its slaves and chains. You said we all know what he'll do. I don't know. You know he isn't to be trusted. Trust? Oh, I'm sorry. I was under the misapprehension your chosen profession was politics. Tommy Lee Jones? Lincoln the inveterate dawdler. Lincoln the southerner. Lincoln the capitulating compromiser. Leader of the godforsaken Republican Party. Our party has asked us to work with him to accomplish the death of slavery, retain even in opposition your capacity for astonishment. Here, here. Well, you can have that for nothing. What we need money for is bribes. I have explained to Mr. Bilbo and Mr. Latham that we're offering patronage jobs to the Dems who vote yes. The president would be unhappy to hear you did that. <laughs> well, will he be unhappy if we lose? The House recognizes Fernando Wood. The House debate begins. January 9th. Okay, and they want it to be done by January 31st. New York delegation's looking decidedly uninspired. And radical republicanism's abolitionist fanaticism. Dear heavens. Past shall set at immediate liberty four million coloreds while manacling the limbs of the white race in America. Shall not pass. You shall not pass. What's more interesting is how dismal and disgruntled Mr. Naaman appears. He should be cheering right now. Looks like he ate a bad oyster. And the constituents it serves. We when out of Mr. Order. Wood conclude his interminable gabble, some of us breathe oxygen, and we find the mephitic fumes of his oratory a lethal challenge to our pulmonary. Wow, that was a very wordy insult, but I liked it. Slavery is the only insult to natural law, you fatuous nincompoop. <laughs> Nincompoop? What violates natural law? Slavery. And you, Pendleton, you insult God, you unnatural noise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't encourage this. <laughs> you bet, you bet, you bet, you bet, you bet. <laughs> Joseph Gordon Levitt. Poppy. Hey. Uh, You're only staying a few days. Why'd you pack all of that? Well, I, I don't know how long. Was I mean, go to... tell your father Robert's home. I went to Richmond to talk to traitors, to smile at and plead with traitors, because it'll be spring in two months. The roads will be passable 
the spring slaughter commences. Think of my Frank, whom you've taken to your heart, how you'll blame yourself if the war takes my son, as it's taken multitudes of sons. I don't think he wants the war. Trading Trading when it reaches the flight. Not now! Oh, Bob, welcome home. Hey, just give us a moment, please, Robert. Thank you. You've always kept your word to me. Those Southern men are coming. I beg you. Christ, I sir. understand. Talk peace with these men. No one believes that they can have both peace and the amendment is... We remain 20 yeses short. Which we're seeking from among 64 lame duck Democrats. We've abandoned these 39 to the devil that possesses them. Charles Hansen. Giles Stewart. So these are the ones that they still believe they maybe could Homer sway. Benson. Number six, Hawkins from Ohio. Six. Well, thus far, that's Graylor's abstention. Abstention. Time for my public opinion bath. Might as well let them in. Seven yeses with Mr. Ellis, 13 to go. One last item, an absurdity, but my associates report that among the representatives, fantastical rumors brooded about, which I immediately disavowed, that you'd allowed bleary old Preston Blairdis to send commissioners up to Washington with a peace plan. I, of course, told them that you would never. Why? Because why on earth would you? No man's land outside of Peter Griffin on January 11th. These are the people coming from Richmond? Vice President of the Confederate States of America. So they are kind of their own nation? Do, do, do. Why wasn't I consulted? I'm Secretary of State. What will happen, do you imagine, when these peace commissioners arrive? And next, Democrats will invite them up to hearings on the Hill. The newspapers will ask, why risk enraging the Confederacy over the issue of slavery when they're here to make peace? Because he can talk to them. If anyone can, he can, right? What hope for any Democratic votes, Willem? if word gets out that I've refused a chance to end the war. You think word won't get out? It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. That's you the can look into the seeds of time, say which grain will grow and which will not. This is disaster. Time is a great thickener of things, but yes, I suppose it is. Actually, I have no idea what you mean by that. Get me 13 votes. Them fellas from Richmond ain't here yet. <laughs> U.S. Army Headquarters before January 12th. What do you think their families think about me? The only reason they don't throw things and spit on me is because you're so popular. I can't concentrate on, on British mercantile law. I might not even want to be a lawyer. It's a sturdy profession. I want to be useful, but now, not afterwards. I ain't wearing them things, Mr. Slade. They never fit right. So you won't tell me no, but the war will be over in a month, and you know it will. Why do some slaves cost more than others? Uh, if they're still young and healthy, if the women can still conceive. Put them back in the box, you scoundrel. <laughs> when you're a slave, did they beat you? I was born a free man. Nobody beat me, except I beat them right back. Mr. Lincoln, could you come Mrs. with me? Mrs. Keckley was a slave. Ask her if she was beaten. Oh, hello. I was beaten with a fire shovel when I was younger than you. You should go to Mrs. Lincoln. She's in Willie's room. She never goes in there. The reception line is already stretching out the door. So the reception line is like when Mr. and Mrs. Jolly came and they just... I'm guessing Willie is their son who died. My head hurts so I prayed for death that night Willie died. My headaches are how I know I didn't get my wish. How to endure the long afternoon and deep into the night. I know. Try not to think about him. How will I manage? Somehow. Somehow. You will. Four years more in this terrible house reproaching us. We should have canceled that reception, shouldn't we? Well, we didn't know how sick he was, I Molly. knew. I saw that night. He was dying. Well, three years ago, the war was going so badly, and we had to put on a face. But I saw where he was dying. I saw him. It's too hard. <laughs> oh, poor thing. So she has headaches all day, every day. She has to put on this face. She doesn't like being here. Four years ago when the president and I arrived, this was pure pigsty. As if your committee joined with all of Washington awaiting in what you anticipated would be our comfort in squalor. Further proof that my husband and I were prairie primitives, unsuited to the position to which in- Well, she is telling them, isn't she? Oh, I'm detaining you. And more importantly, the people behind you. How the people love my husband. They flock to see him by their thousands. 
on some public days. They will never love you the way they love him. Okay. Difficult it must be for you to know that. I thought we liked Tommy Lee Jones. I thought he's on our side. Since we have the floor next in the debate, I thought I'd suggest you might temper your contribution so as not to frighten our conservative friends. When the Punitive war ends, I intend to push for full equality, the Negro vote, and much more. Congress shall mandate the seizure of every foot of rebel land and every dollar of their property. We'll use their confiscated wealth to establish hundreds of thousands of free Negro farmers. We'll build up the land down there of free men and free women and free children and freedom. The nation needs to know that we have such plans. Oh. I'm gonna give a guy Damn about the people and what they want to face of someone who has fought long and hard for the good of the people without caring much for any of them. Now I look a lot worse without my wig. <laughs> the people elected me to represent them, to lead them, and I lead. You ought to try it. I admire your zeal, Stevens, and I have tried to profit from the example. If I'd listened to you, I'd have declared every slave free the minute the first shell struck Fort Sumter. Border states would have gone over to the Confederacy, the war would have been lost, and the Union along with it. And instead of abolishing slavery, mm. we'd be watching helpless as infants as it spread from the American South into South America. Oh, you have longed to say that to me. <laughs> A big fat I told you so. A compass I learned when I was surveying. It'll, it'll point you true north from where you're standing, but it's got no advice about the swamp, deserts, and chasms that you'll encounter along the way. If in pursuit of your destination you plunge ahead heedless of obstacles and achieve nothing more than to sink in a swamp, what's the use of knowing true north? Wow. He's really good at those analogies. Proverbs like Jesus. Robert's gonna cleave with a Suleiman list. Take time to talk to Robbie. You only have time for Tad. Well, Tad's young. So's Robert. Too young for the army. There's plenty of boys younger than Robert signing up. Don't take Robbie. Secretary Stanton has sent over to tell you that as of half an hour ago, the shelling of Wilmington Harbor has commenced. That's the thing. Come on out, you old rat! Whoa. That's what Ethan Allen called out to the commander of Fort Ticonderoga. You're going to tell a story. I don't believe that I can bear to listen to another one of your stories right now. Hello. Ethan Allen went to London to help our new country conduct his business with the king. Okay. The English sneered at how rough we are. So one day he was invited to the townhouse of a great English lord. Mr. Allen discovered on entering the water closet that the only decoration therein was a, a portrait of George Washington. Well, what did he think of its placement? Did it seem appropriately located? Mr. Allen said it did. His host was astounded. The whole world knows nothing to make an Englishman sit quicker than the sight of George Washington. <laughs> it's crazy because, like he said, the Englishman at the time probably thought Americans so uncivilized and so beneath them. That's what the South is thinking of the blacks. And they're themselves Americans. Fort Fisher is ours. We've taken the port. In Wilmington. We've taken the fort, but the city of Wilmington has not surrendered. How many casualties? How many? Before this blood is dry, when Stevens next takes the floor, get him to proclaim what we all know he believes that his cold-colored hearts vote is meant to set the black race on high. Great America. Oh my gosh. I can ensure that every newspaperman from Louisville to San Francisco will be here to witness it and print it. <gasps> He's gonna try and heckle him after Lincoln has asked him to Kentucky, Mr. George Yeaman. Play it cool. I'm disgusted by slavery. I rise on this sad and solemn day to announce that I'm opposed to the amendment. Consider what will become of colored folk. They'll be free, George. That's what will become of them. Too publicly against us. You can't change course now. Not for some miserable little job, anyway. We will be forced to enfranchise the men of the colored race. It would be inhuman not to. Who among us is prepared to give Negroes the vote? <laughs> what shall follow upon that? Universal enfranchisement? <laughs> Votes for women? Oh, how could we ever? My neighbors hear that I voted yes for Nick freedom. The note of peace, they will kill me. I want to do right. You some money in the bar. But I got no courage. You want to, what was it? A tax man for the Western Reserve. How you can have the whole state of Ohio if you want? Uh-oh. We still need 20, we lost one. Two days ago, we had 12. What happened? There is a perceptible increase in resistance. Excuse? 
Is he actually going to shoot at him? Tell Lincoln to deny the rumors publicly. I expect you to do your work and have sufficient sense and taste not to presume to instruct the president. Is there a Confederate offer or not? They're here. Ulysses S. Grant, General-in-Chief of the United States Army. A lot of buildings are named after him, right? I suggest you work some changes to your proposal. I'm fighting to protect it from armed rebels. If you want to discuss peace with President Lincoln, consider revisions. What in heaven's name can we discuss? Terms of surrender. But their intentions are good, sincere, to restore peace and union. After four years of war and near 600,000 lives lost, he believes we can end this war now. My trust in him is marrow deep. You can bring the delegates to Washington. In exchange for the South's immediate surrender, we could promise them the amendment's defeat. We'd end the war this week. Or if you could manage without seeming to do it, to a peace delegation might encounter delays as they travel up the James River, particularly with the fighting around Wilmington. Within 10 days' time, we might pass the 13th Amendment. But we're not even close, are we? Here's a 16-year-old boy. We're gonna hang him. I don't think even Stanton would complain if I pardoned him. You think Stanton would complain? What time is it? It's 3.40 in the morning. Don't let him pardon anymore. Just Stanton thinks you pardon too many. I mean, He's have done that, crippled his horse. That was cruel. You don't just hang a 16-year-old boy for Ask that. Ask the horse. There's no 16-year-old boys left. Yeah, pardon him. Grant wants me to bring the secesh delegates to Washington. So there are secesh delegates. War's nearly done, ain't that so? But use one more corpse. Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant, I have read your words with interest. I ask that you maintain among your troops military preparedness for battle. Let Captain Saunders convey the commissioners to me here in Washington. A. Lincoln and the date. Shall I transmit, sir? Adam Jones. Can we choose to be born? I don't suppose so. Are we fitted to the times we're born into? You may be, sir, fitted. What do you reckon? Well, I'm an engineer. I reckon there's machinery, but no one's done the fitting. You must know Euclid's axioms and common notions, an old book I borrowed. Little enough ever found its way in here, but... Euclid's first common notion is this. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. It's true because it works. Has done and always will do. You see, there it is, even in that 2,000-year-old book of mechanical law. Things which are equal to the same thing are Thanks. equal to, to each, each other. other. That's the origin, isn't it? That's justice. He needs to talk to the house and on the floor. Have Captain Saunders convey the gentleman aboard the River Queen as far as Hampton Roads and there wait until further advice from me. Change his mind. Do not proceed to Washington. Because he has to get the amendment passed before he ends the war. So his Secretary of State told him that if they come to Washington and he says, you surrender and I won't try to pass the amendment, that they'll agree to that. But then slavery would still be very much a thing in the South. House of Representatives, January 27th. I've asked you a question, Mr. Stevens, and you must answer me. Do you or do you not hold that the precept that all men are created equal? Is that not the true purpose of the amendment? Elevate. The true purpose of the amendment, Mr. Wood, do you perfectly name brainless, obstructive objects? <laughs> now you have always insisted, Mr. Stevens, that Negroes are the same as white men are. The true purpose of the amendment. Don't go in the swamps. The in all things, only with equality before the law and nothing more. You believe that Negroes are entirely equal to white men? I don't hold with equality in all things, only with equality After before the, the decade, law. After the decade, this amendment's not to do with race equality. Your frantic attempt to delude us now, unworthy of a white man. Yeah. Oh boy. You are more reptile than man, George. So low and flat that the foot of man is incapable of crushing How you. How dare you? How dare you? Sorry. I do not hold with equality in all things, only with equality before the law. I did it. Oh, that look. You've led the battle for race equality for 30 years. Have you lost your very soul, Mr. Stevens? He just did what the, he gave us the chance. I want the amendment to pass so that the Constitution's first and only mention of slavery is its absolute prohibition. He's a good man. I'm not going in. 
You said you wanted to help me. This is just a clumsy attempt at discouragement. I've seen what it's like. This changes nothing. Well, boys, first question. You getting enough to eat? Hello, sir. What's your name, soldier? Robert. Robert, good to meet you, Robert. John. John. I've seen you before. Make sure you get some steak. I wouldn't mind. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I have to do this, and I will do it, and I don't need your permission to enlist. That same speech has been made by how many sons? I don't need your damn permission, you miserable old goat. I'm going to enlist anyhow. I'm commander-in-chief. So in point of fact, without my permission, you ain't enlisting in nothing nowhere, young man. It's mama you're scared of. It's not me getting killed. I have to do this. And I will, or I will feel ashamed of myself for the rest of my life. Whether or not you fought is what's gonna matter. And not just to other people, but to myself. I won't be you, Pa, I can't do that, but I don't wanna be nothing. Oh man, that's really, really tough. Most men, their firstborn is their favorite. You, you've always blamed Robert for being born. We'll be made to just, pay with our just sons. Just this <laughs> once. Robert will never forgive himself. You imagine he'll forgive us? Oh my gosh. Will you threaten me again with the madhouse as you did when I couldn't stop crying over Willie? So did Willie die in the war? An illness from the war? Dangerously well, sick, but Willie, beside himself with grief. I was holding oh, but you all grief. You all grief. Let him near him. Was she screaming from morning to night? Risk him see hey, how angry I was. Everybody's damn sick. I should have clapped you in the madhouse. Then do it. You do it this time. Lock me away. You'll have to, I swear. Robert is killed. I literally don't know what I would do either. I don't know. Like he said, he has to, he'll never live with himself. Robert said that. But as a mom and dad, you would do anything. I couldn't tolerate you grieving so for Willie because I couldn't permit it in myself. I wanted to crawl under the earth, into the vault. And I still do. Every day I do. Speak to me about grief. I must make my decisions. Bob must make his, you yours, and bear what we must. Hold and carry what we must. What I carry within me, you must allow me to do it. Alone, as I must, and you alone, Mary, may lighten this burden or render it intolerable, as you choose. It's an impossible situation. You think I'm ignorant of what you're up to because you haven't discussed this scheme with me as you ought to have done? When have I ever been so easily bamboozled? Seward doesn't want me leaving big muddy footprints all over town. The proper placement of footfalls on treacherous paths. Seward can't do it. You must. Because if you fail to acquire the necessary votes, what would do you, sir? You will answer to me. That was a good line. No one knew where to put the footprints on a treacherous path except you. No one's known like you. It has to be him to get the votes. That's what I say. Put him on the speaker house floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your concern over this. And I want you to know they'll approve it. God will see to it. I don't envy him his task. Are you afraid of what lies ahead? White people don't want us here. Many don't. What about you? I don't know you, Mrs. Keckley. Any of you. You're familiar to me as all people are. Unaccommodated, poor, barefoot creatures such as we all are. You have a right to expect what I expect. And likely our expectations are not incomprehensible to each other. I assume I'll get used to you. What you are to the nation, what will become of you once slavery's day is done, I, I don't know. Negroes have been fighting and dying for freedom since the first of us was a slave. I never heard any ask what freedom would bring. Freedom is first. And as for me, my son died fighting for the Union. Where in the Union blue, for freedom he died. And I'm his mother. That's what I am to the nation, Mr. Lincoln. You have a visitor. <laughs> well, I'll be I wouldn't bet against it. W.M. Bilbo. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bilbo. Gentlemen, why are you here? No offense, but Mr. Seward's banished the very mention of your name. The Secretary of State here tells me that uh, you got 11 Democrats in the bag. I'm here to alert you boys that the great day of reckoning is nigh upon us. The Democrats we've yet to bag, sir. The patronage job simply won't bag them. They require more convincing. And the governor, Curtin, is set to declare a winner in the disputed congressional election for the Pennsylvania 16th district. District, what a joy to be comprehended. Hop on a train to Phil Dell, call on the governor, yes. polish yourself up first. <laughs> the incumbent is claiming he won it. Carl Frow. That's him. Carl Frow. He is a Democrat. I understand mind. that. So I think. 
A little bit silly. <laughs> Tell Governor Curtin, it'd be much appreciated if he'd invite the House of Representatives. He, he'll agree to it. Then advise Carfroth, if he hopes to retain his seat, that he better pay a visit to Thaddeus Stevens. You are Canfrey. Carfroth, Mr. Stevens. You are a dim oh crap. What's the matter with you? Are you wicked? <laughs> Your party was beat. Your challenger's party now controls the house. You have been beaten. You shall shortly be sent home in disgrace. So I will immediately become a Republican and vote yes for you. Oh, yes. Kofroff will vote yes, but Kofroff will remain a Democrat until after he does so. This we right. want to show the amendment has bipartisan support, you idiots. You idiots. George Yeaman. Yes, Yeaman. Yeaman, that would count. Y-E-A-M-A-N. He's the one that stood up and said, slavery disgusts me, but I can't. I can't. for the amendment. I saw a barge once, Mr. Yeaman. Story time. Filled with colored men in chains, heading down the Mississippi to the New Orleans slave market. Slavery troubled me as long as I can remember. In a way, it never troubled my father. He knew no small holding dirt farmer could compete with slave plantations, and he took us out from Kentucky to get away from him. He wanted Indiana kept free. He wasn't a kind man, but there was a rough moral urge for fairness. I learned that from him, I suppose. I hate it too, sir. Slavery. But, but we're entirely unready for emancipation. Questions. We're unready for peace too, ain't we? I read your speech, George. Negroes in the vote. That's a puzzle. But Negroes can't vote. You're not suggesting we enfranchise color. I'm people. asking only that you disenthrall yourself from the slave powers. It's gonna be so very close. Is it anonymous? Let me see what you can do. I can't make sense of it. What he died for. Mr. Lincoln, I hate them all. I do. All black people. I am a prejudiced man. Well, I'd change that in you if I could. That's not why I come. I might be wrong, Mr. Hutton, but I expect colored people most likely be free. And when that's so, it's simple truth that your brother's bravery and his death helped make it so. Only you can decide whether that sense enough for you or not. My deepest sympathies to your family. You've had no defections from the Republican right to trouble you. Where so what you promised? Where the hell are the commissioners? You lied to me, Mr. Lincoln. We are absolutely guaranteed to lose the whole thing. Uh, Leave the Constitution you, alone. Oh, oh, state oh, by state, you can extra... I can't listen to this anymore. I can't accomplish damn thing of any human meaning or worth until we cure ourselves of slavery and end this pestilential war. I know I need this. This amendment is that cure. We're stepped out upon the world stage now. Now! With the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilt to afford us this moment. Now! 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 See the here and now. That's the hardest thing. Two votes stand in its way. These votes must be procured. Oh my gosh. Two votes. The morning of the vote. Ladies and gentlemen, first in the history of this people's chamber, to your house. Today we will vote. Okay. I have just received confirmation of what previously has been merely rumored. Affidavits! That commissioners have indeed come north, bearing an offer of immediate cessation of our civil war. <laughs> Postpone this vote until we have answers from the president himself. Postpone the vote! Postpone the vote! No! What's happening? The conservative faction of border and western republicans cannot approve this amendment about which we harbor grave doubts. Wait a second. If a peace offer is being held hostage to its success. Join it together with our democratic colleague, I second the motion to postpone. The peace commissioners in the city. Quick man, quick. What? What's happening? This is precisely what Mr. Wood wishes me to respond to. Word for word, this is precisely the assurance that he demands of- Can I, why, uh, I guess there's rules, he can't just go there? I feel, uh, I have to say, Mr. Lincoln, that making a false representation of Congress is, it's, it's, it's impeachable, I've, I've made no such false representation. So far as I know, there are no peace commissioners in the city, nor are there likely to be. Oh. Ah. That means nothing. Are there commissioners from the South, or aren't there? 
The president has answered you, sir. Your peace offer is not a denial. The conservative Republican faction satisfied, and we thank Mr. Lincoln. I move to table Mr. Wood's motion. Table. So we vote. The clerk will now call the roll for the voting. Come on, come through, people. We begin with Connecticut. Mr. Augustus Benjamin. Nay. Connecticut? Nay. Mr. John Ellis. How say you? Aye. What? Bean Pole Burton is pleased to vote yay. State of New Jersey. Mr. Harold Hollister. How say you? No. Mr. Hutton? Mr. Hutton. Mr. William Hutton? Come on. Remembering at this moment his beloved brother Frederick votes against the amendment. Webster Allen, Illinois, Democrat, votes no. Baylor, yes. Mr. Walter H. Washburn? Votes no. <sighs> Washburn. And Mr. George Yeaman, how say you? Come on, Yeaman. Sorry, Mr. Yeaman, I didn't hear your vote. Come on. I said I. Mr. McPherson. Ah! Mr. Clay R. Hawkins of Ohio. You just saw, you just saw him do it. Yeaman did it. Oh, damn it, I'm voting yes. I don't care, you should be dead. Mr. Edwin F. LeClerc. No. Oh, to hell with it. Shoot me dead too, yes. Mr. Alexander Kofroff. Kofroff. I vote yes. <laughs> Josiah Grinnell. Yay. Meyer Strauss. Nay. I vote Mr. yes. Howard Gilfoyle. Yay. John F. McKenzie. Yay. What about Tommy Lee Jones? He gets the vote, right? Or they don't? Please call my name. I want to cast a vote. I object. The speaker may vote if he so chooses. Highly unusual, sir. This isn't usual, Mr. Pendleton. This is history. How does Mr. Schuyler Colfax vote? I, of course. <laughs> the final vote. Eight absent or not voting, 56 votes against, 119 votes for, with a margin of two votes. Imagine there's a lot of people that are protesting it too. The greatest measure of the 19th century passed by corruption, aided and abetted by the purest man in America. I wish you had been present. I wish I'd been. It was a spectacle. You can't bring your housekeeper to the house. I won't give them gossip. This is enough. This is, it's more than enough for now. An amendment to the Constitution of the United States, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Will the uh, Southern states resume their former position in the Union? I'd like peace immediately. Yes, yeah. I'd like your states restored to their practical relations with the Union immediately. Surrender, and we can discuss reconstruction. Surrender won't be thought of, unless you've assured us, in writing, that we'll be readmitted in time to block this amendment. Don't you know what they've done? You'll not be a conquered people, Mr. Hunter. You will be citizens. Yes. Return to the laws and the guarantees of rights of the Constitution. Which now extinguishes slavery. Yes. All our laws will be determined by a Congress of vengeful Yankees. All our rights will be subject to a Supreme Court managed by bloody Republican radicals. Okay. We ain't here to discuss Reconstruction. We have no legal basis for that. The Northern states shall ratify. As I figure, it remains for two of the Southern states to do the same, even after all are readmitted. And I've been working on that. Tennessee and Louisiana. Arkansas, too, most likely. It'll be ratified. Slavery, sir, it's done. It's done. It's done. So you can make this hard or easy. 
we may discover other freedoms previously unknown to us, that you kept faith with democratic process, frustrating as that can be. Come, sir, spare us at least these pieties. Did you defeat us with ballots? How have you held your union together? Through democracy. How many hundreds of thousands have died during your administration? Your union, sir, is bonded in cannon fire and death. It may be all right. But say all we've done is show the world that democracy isn't chaos, that there is a great invisible strength in a people's union. Say we've shown that a people can endure awful sacrifice and yet cohere. Mightn't that save at least the idea of democracy to aspire to, eventually to become worthy of? At all rates, whatever may be proven by blood and sacrifice must have been proved by now. Shall we stop this bleeding? Outside Petersburg, Virginia, April 3rd. April 3rd, three months later. As we discussed. Liberality all around, not punishment. I don't want that. And the leaders, Jeff and the rest of them, they escape, leave the country while my back's turned. That wouldn't upset me none. When peace comes, it mustn't just be hangings. By outward appearance, you're 10 years older than you were a year ago. Some weariness has bit at my bones. I've never seen the like of it before, what I've seen today. You always knew that, what this was going to be. Intimate and ugly. You must have needed to see it close when you decided to come down here. Yeah. We've made it possible for one another to do terrible things. We've won the war. Now, you have to lead us out of it. You've been itched to travel. Mm -hmm. To the west, by rail. All anyone will remember of me is how's crazy and I ruined your happiness. For an ordinary person, for anyone other than you. We must try to be happier. We've been so miserable for so long. I know how this ends for him. I have the same feeling at the end of 13 days. has been shot <laughs> at Ford's Theatre. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was hoping they wouldn't show this part. Fervently do we pray that this mighty scourge of war may speedily pass away. Yet if God wills that it continue, written fifty years of unrequited toil shall be sunk, and until every drop of blood drawn with the lash shall be paid by another drawn with the sword, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Malice toward none, charity for all. To bind up the nation's wound, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow, and his orphan to do all which may achieve and cherish a just Tad is so young a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. He did it, he did both. He did the impossible. Oh wow. Oh okay. The thing I love about movies is I'm discovering is that like of course I knew about President Lincoln and everyone knows his name. They like really bring the man, the character, the story, history to life. And I know that sounds so cheesy, but like I can very easily forget things I've read in a textbook, but I will not forget that movie. I don't know how much he based his character off of like the real Abraham Lincoln, but like I'll remember his personality and his storytelling and what people thought back then and how he did the impossible. It's crazy. I guess I didn't realize how close it was to not being passed and how much he had to fight through to make it happen. I knew he was assassinated, which it seems like he was so loved by most, not everyone for sure. I liked seeing him on the battlefield in the beginning talking to the soldiers and in the soldiers hospital and seeing everyday people and 
hearing about their problems. It just seemed like if it was another man at that time who wasn't as fervent that slavery should be abolished, who knows what would have happened. Oh, it's just so sad that he was killed. Daniel Day-Lewis, I feel like after seeing that, I know why people say he's such an amazing, great actor, one of the best. And like, especially when I put it side by side with Gangs of New York or even Phantom Thread, like he becomes that character, doesn't he? Sally Field was amazing. There's so many faces I recognize. I just had to look it up because the Ulysses Grant was driving me crazy. He's from Chernobyl, of course. It was a very long movie. It didn't feel long. I know a lot of it was like political stuff in the house and votes back and forth and that didn't bore me. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching along. I love movies. That was really cool to see history come to life as it has been with so many that I have watched. So thank you for watching along and I'll see you again soon.